So today we're going to go on a little road trip out to Winston-Salem. And when we're out there, I'm going to talk about my favorite tobaccos of 2015. Now the blends I'm going to talk about today, these are ones that I tried for the first time this year. They're not any of my old favorites from last year. And when we're out there, I'm going to try to uh, show you a few spots. Uh, Winston-Salem's a pretty interesting city from what I've seen so far. And I'm also going to give some shout outs uh, when I'm there as well. The first one of which, before we take off, is to David Faraday. I did a pipe trade, uh, a pipe pass I should say, with David uh, a couple weekends ago. And I got this Jay Cackard, which is really nice, huge bowl, and this Savinelli here. And then I gave him two of my uh, favorite Boswell pipes. Uh, David was also kind enough to give me two tins here, and these are aged tins. Uh, the first one is Germain Special Latakia Flake, and the second one is some aged Pelican. Now I'm not a Latakia guy, but I'm trying, little by little, and I'm really enjoying these so far. And one more topic before we take off. Uh, in the third week of June, I'm going to be going out to the Dr. Grable plant, and they were kind enough to allow me to take a tour of the factory as well as do a sit-down one-on-one interview. So if you guys have any questions you'd like me to ask uh, when I get out there, just put them down below, and I'll do my best to, uh, to try to ask them. All right, so with that, let's hit the road, head out west, and talk about some of my favorite tobaccos of 2015. I hope you enjoy. All right, guys, so we're going to check out this place. It's the Six and Vine Wine Bar. All right, so let's get started. In no particular order, these are some of the blends in my top five. Number one would be Canal Boat by Cornell and Deal. And out of all the blends I've had this year, this is the one that surprised me the most. It has three components that are relatively unique. Uh, they do exist in other blends, but this is the first blend that I've had that has these three. So it's Cube Cup Burley, Cyprian Latakia, and Sweet and Black Cavendish. And there's something about not just the components, but the proportions of those components that me as a Burley lover just really appreciate. And again, I've never had it before. All right, guys, number two on the list is Briar Fox. Now, Briar Fox is a bestseller, and the reason I know that is because it says it right there on the tin. But, you know, I didn't see a lot of videos about Briar Fox. I didn't read a lot about it. Most of my friends uh, didn't talk about it. So I'm really glad I stumbled across it. Because when I did, I went through this tin like a bag of Oreos. It took me about four or five days and it was gone. And although I didn't have that epiphany smoke, I didn't have that amazing smoke, I just kept reaching for it day after day. And that's one of the true signs that you know you have a great smoke is because you keep reaching for it. And that's what, that's what this one did for me. So it's definitely in my top five. And number three on the list actually comes from a recommendation from Chris and Jeremy at Cornell and Deal. When I was out there, I asked him, for someone who likes Burley Flake number three like me, or for someone who likes Old Joe Krantz, what's a similar blend that's in the same vicinity, but yet a little bit distinct? And what they recommended was Oak Alley. So as soon as I got home, I ordered a couple tins. And this one surprised me too. Not nearly as much as Canal Boat did. This is still, still the biggest surprise of the year so far. But it surprised me in terms of the way that it changes over the course of a bowl. And just when I thought I was crazy, I went and did a, a YouTube search for other reviews of this blend. And I found Smoking Pipeliners review, uh, Tade. And I was uh, very happy to find that he said the exact same thing. The second half of the bowl of Oak Alley definitely starts coming alive more so than the top half. The top half, to be honest, it was nothing that really grabbed my attention. Just when I was starting to you know, think about dumping the bowl, it started to come alive. And I rarely read tin descriptions on camera, but this one's worth it. And it's a mouthful, so I couldn't memorize it. But what Oak Alley is, is uh, it's really a mixture of uh, sweet and red Virginias, white brown burley, and Perique, and Katrini Turkish. And I'm probably mispronouncing that, but it doesn't matter because it still smokes great. Even if you mispronounce it. All right, so just checked into the hotel, showered, changed, and I think we're on tobacco number four now. So I got it here in my bag, and we'll talk about it in just a minute. Uh, the concierge is pointing me toward a rooftop patio up here. So we're gonna go check that out. All right, so before I get to tobacco number four, I wanted to give a special shout out to Jason McNary for making this really eye-catching tamper. Uh, Jason Dagner posted these to his Instagram page, and within about a few seconds, I knew that I wanted one right away. 
Uh, number one is because I love the color blue, but number two is because because I do a lot of outdoor piping, I'm losing check tools and tampers like left and right. And I knew this is one that I could catch uh, or catch my eye from 20 feet away if I dropped it somewhere. So if you're interested in one of these, definitely contact Jason McNary. I'll put his information and his webpage down in the bucket. So check him out. All right, time to talk about number five. And this is a tobacco that also really surprised me, just like Canal Boat. And this blend is Morley's best. Now, it's very rare for me to get attached to a blend that doesn't come in a tin, that, that just comes in a bulk. Um, because I am affected by marketing and, and colors and packaging like we all are. But with Morley's best, unlike any other bulk blend I've had before, something hit me right away. And it really frustrated me because I knew I loved it, but you know, I feel like I can describe a lot of blends, but Morley's Best really challenged me. It didn't challenge me to smoke it, it challenged me to describe it. In order to prepare for this segment of this video, I actually am watching myself in a 10 minute recording from uh, about a week ago, you're not gonna be able to see that because it was dark, um, trying to describe it to myself to make notes for this video. And I'll just play a couple seconds here because I was so frustrated I was, um, using words I never use. It's lean. So there we go. It's, this is a lean. All right, I'm not gonna uh, bore you with the details, but that video was just for me, J just as a preparation for this video. And I'm sitting there struggling. But um, long story short, Morley's been, Morley's Best is um, something that, that just really made a, a fantastic impression on me and I'd recommend it to anybody who loves a, a burly based blend. So for the next blend on the list, before I tell you the name of the blend, I wanna tell you how I arrived at it, how I came to know it. So one of the things I've been really trying to get into is cigar leaf blends. And usually cigar leaf blends have a little bit of Latakia in them. And although I'm not a big Latakia fan, I have come to realize that Latakia and cigar leaf, when they're combined, they do something special together. There, there's, a, there's a marriage there that if you had Cigar Leaf without it, um, McClellan makes a Maduro that, that doesn't have it, and that's still great. But for the most part, I, I think those two components do really marry well together. So I went and ordered four blends. I, I ordered uh, GLP's Robusto, uh, Cornell and Deal's uh, Billy Bud, um, Key Largo, and and John Patton Stormfront. And I tried all four over the course of a couple weeks. And one of those rose to the top pretty quickly. And that blend is the one that makes this list, and that is Key Largo. Out of all four, and I like three of those four, uh, Key Largo just really separated itself out. Um, it, it's clean, it's pure, it, it, I think it has more cigar leaf in it. Um, at least it has that flavor of cigar leaf more than the other four do, or the other three. And it's just hands down the winner, I think, of those four. Uh, a, a close second to that would be John Patton Stormfront, which is a little bit more of a dessert or a desserty tasting, uh, a little more sweet cigar leaf blend. But for me, when it comes to cigar leaf, Key Largo wins it by a lion's head. Well, no top tobacco was to be complete without an honorable mention. So I'm going to show you a tin here. It's not the traditional honorable mention in the sense that it's just outside my top uh, top five or top ten, but it's an honorable mention in terms of I think it might pop into this list next year, and it's not going to be six months from now. It's going to be at least a year, and the reason why is because this blend has Bright Virginia in it, uh, much like Opening Night from Cornell and Deal. And I reviewed uh, Opening Night a couple months ago, one of those winter public piping videos I made. And at that time, I got a flavor of what Bright Virginias are like. And I tried to stove it to try to calm it down a little bit. That worked out a little bit. I had some moments there in that video where I was, I was uh, enjoying it and, and getting something that I really identified with. But I never had that awesome bowl from top to bottom. So the blend that's in that same category is GLP's Triple Play. And 
I didn't actually read the tin before I had it, but my first couple bowls, I, I was struggling with it. Um, not struggling in the way that I do with Broly Flake number two, but still struggling a little bit. And I, was, I, I just kind of felt like, you know, this reminds me of opening night. And then after the third bowl, I turned it over and it said Bright Virginia. And then I just, a, a kind of an aha epiphany moment happened where I realized I probably don't like or have yet to appreciate Bright Virginias. So I wanted to mention that because I know a lot of people like triple play and I know it's a high quality blend. I got to show you this flake because the flake is beautiful or the, uh, the cake is beautiful. It's just, it's insane. I love looking at it. I just don't yet love smoking it. But this is one I'm going to work on. I'm not going to put it in the cellar and store it for a year. I'm going to keep, you know, chipping away at it with an ice pick. Um, half a bowl at a time, here and there, and try to develop my palate to the point where I can appreciate it. All right, I may have found the coolest bar in all of Winston-Salem. It's called the Luna Lounge Tiki Bar, and I'm gonna walk you through it right now. And I also wanna give a couple shout outs to some pie presenters out there that make videos that put me in a really good mood. Um, they're just kind of a source of positivity. And at the top of that list would definitely be Legacy.UK. He's such an advocate for the hobby. And he has such such a positive attitude. And his unique take toward uh, this hobby, it's very different than I've seen before. Um, one thing I really appreciate about Chris is he talks about, you know, the pleasure of looking after pipes and caring for them. And although we all feel that way, I think he's one of the few that actually explicitly talks about it and phrases it that way. And that really, uh, that really struck me the first time I saw some of his videos. So, Chris, big shout out to you. And the other shout out I want to give is to Eastern Grey. And when I watch Eastern Grey's videos, I'm instantly in a good mood because when you watch any of his videos, you know, right from the get-go, the guy is in a, in a positive mood, he's smiling. You can tell he's really enjoying not just the hobby, but he's also enjoying the, the act of actually making a video, putting out content out there. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for joining me. Uh, again, if you have any questions that you'd like me to ask uh, the Dr. Graybo folks when I get out there, just put them down below. And let me know if you like this one. And I'm going to go ahead and include some bonus footage. Um, it's from the same trip, yeah, but I didn't want to include it in the main video because it's not about specific tobaccos. It's more about uh, its commentary on, on top of the whole uh, trip, really. So I hope you enjoy these, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again. Now, what I wish would have made this list are some of my old favorites from Rat Rays and Solani. Uh, specifically, Brown Cooney. Uh, back in the day, I had some awesome bowls of Brown Cooney. Old Gowry. And then on the Solani front, uh, Silver Flake were some of my old favorites. But unfortunately, there's no such thing as a time machine on the palate. You can't turn back time. And that's both a good thing and a bad thing because it does force you to keep moving on. Uh, in the journey of pipe smoking, but at the same time, it is kind of sad when you realize that you're never going to be able to look at a blend the way you used to back in the day. And it's just a reality. But I'm always going to look fondly upon Brown Clooney and Old Gowry and, uh, and Silver Flake. I've had them recently and they're, and they're not quite the same. Um, they're not actually anywhere close to the same they were when I first had them but I still have fond memories. And to be honest, I'm probably purposely not gonna smoke them anymore um, because I wanna retain those fond memories I had of them. They were instrumental steps in, in my evolution of, of trying tobaccos and developing my palate. And I can describe them to this day, uh, you know, what I thought about them and the experience I had with them. And those are really great memories. And I think if I keep revisiting them, I'm just gonna diminish those memories uh, more and more. So I kind of want to put them in a vault and kind of protect those memories in the future. So I still recommend those for anyone who's never had them before. They're great blends, but for me, times have changed, so I'm not going to be able to return to them. But that's the way this hobby goes.
So it's a little bit later in the evening and I started thinking about what I was saying earlier about the fact that you, there's no such thing as a time machine on your palate. Uh, I was talking earlier about Rat Rays and how some of my favorite blends that I used to really enjoy I can no longer enjoy. Uh, not because they changed but because I changed. And I was sitting here on my probably my third bowl of the day of Cornell and Deal's uh, Billy Bud and I started thinking about one of uh, Matches 860's old videos where he was talking about he smoked Latakia uh, blends for the better course of a year and specifically Billy Bud and in that video he talked about you know by smoking the same blend day in and day out he actually lost the ability to start tasting Latakia that over time it just kind of flattened out it just started tasting like nothing and to a certain extent that happened to me with Rat Rays but I'm kind of late to the party with these uh, cigar leaf blends, but I'm really enjoying them right now, and I'm smoking them very, very often. And I'm starting to think about, number one, will that happen to me? If I keep smoking these uh, cigar leaf blends, will I eventually change my palate to the point where I won't like them? And number two, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I shouldn't smoke them so often. Maybe I should kind of stagger them um, to keep my palate fresh go from a cigar leaf blend to my burlies that I love to uh, the occasional vapor which I also like uh, Dunhill Elizabethan is one of my favorites and I actually think uh, the more I think about it I, I actually think that's probably the direction I should go is to kind of vary uh, the blends that I smoke uh, on a weekly basis because it would be a shame because I'm enjoying this so much right now it'd be a shame that one day that I'd pick up Billy Bud and it would taste like nothing. I hope that doesn't happen. It's possible, but I hope it doesn't happen.